Martin. Sam Rosen here with One Life Fitness, Bodybuilding.com, and the Bodybuilding Not Body Breaking YouTube channel. I'm here with RJ Prather, who's a shooting guard for uh, Robert Morris University, and um, we're going to be doing spine training today, talking about the difference between training for skill and training for the ability to perform skill. Like I just said there, when athletes train, a lot of times they'll be squatting, they'll be deadlifting, thinking that that's how they create more power in their exercise or in their in their skill, right, in their sport. The problem is, though, is the squat is not going to make you a better basketball player. The deadlift is not going to make you a bas better basketball player. But what's going to make you a better basketball player is having a better spine, a better hip, a better ankle. Do you see how that verbiage kind of changes, right? And so we don't really care about how much you squat. I don't really care about how much you deadlift. I care about is how well can you move your spine and how well can you move your hip and how much awareness do you have of those parts of your body so that you can perform the skill of basketball. We're going to go over the concept of spine segmentation. It's similar to a cat cow. Are you familiar with that? A cat cow is generally done for like yoga and stuff. But the point of the cat cow generally would be to just go through spine flexion and extension. But what I'm going to have you do is a little bit different. I want you to watch how I'm in full flexion. And this is going to be your warm up for today. You're going to go through one by one. Do you see how deliberate that is? And I'm not moving like this as I come down. I'm keeping the upper backs locked in. I'm extending, I'm extending, I'm extending all the way up. And then we're going to work our way back down in reverse. So one by one, we need to be able to move each of your vertebrae all the way up. If you tell me that your back bothers you when you're doing a lot of physical activity, chances are those joints just don't move all that well. And if you don't give them specific attention, then why would they move well, right? So this is part of our warm up. So let's get you on all fours. I'm gonna give you a couple cueing. I'm gonna be tapping you on the back to try to get you to feel your spine the best you can. Let's round up all the way and try to find full spine flexion. Can you push this up a little bit higher? Yep, push this up a little bit higher. Is there any pinching your wrists or anything? A little, a little bit. bit. Rotate out a bit. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, if you want to do that one as well, you're welcome to. Round up the whole way. So without moving this at all, are you able to stick your butt up very slowly? Yep, exactly. Anterior tilt of the pelvis. And then lumbar extension. You're extending the low back. We're keeping this totally locked down. Beautiful. Keep going. Pause. Push this back up into me. You see how you broke there a little bit? Totally okay. Resume down here. Keep resuming. Beautiful, keep resuming, keep resuming. Do you feel extension in your mid back there? Now start driving your chest up to the roof. Yeah, right there, like you're playing limbo with my hand. Yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. Do you feel extension in your upper back through there? Take a big deep breath and then go a little bit further. Extension, chest up, chest up, chest up, butt up a little bit more. You see how much more deliberate that was than a typical cat cow. Keep this totally still. Go ahead and bob your head down like you're looking beneath yourself between your knees here. And now think about pushing this up into me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Round that up, beautiful, beautiful. There you go, one by one. It's a very mindful practice, right? You have to be super methodical about it. Keep going up, keep going up. Awesome, round up a little bit higher. Awesome, you feel flexion in your spine there, you feel the core tightening. Get up a little bit higher and take a big deep breath within that. And then again, start from the bottom. We're gonna do one more round after this, okay? So stick your butt up nice and slow. Awesome, extend the lumbar spine, stick your butt up a little bit more here. Yeah, there you go, man, tilt the pelvis. Now pause, can you bring this back up? You see how you broke a little bit from there, okay? So we have a hard time separating this from this and your job is just to work on that skill. Resume. There you go, good correction there. That was a very good correction, keep going. You have to think pretty hard about it, huh? That's all good, keep going. Chest up, not head up though, chest up. There's a difference, yeah, 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 yeah. You feel that through here a little bit better? And now stick your chest up and your head up. All the way up, all the way up, butt up a little bit more. Perfect, big deep breath there. Try to go a little bit further. So now I'm gonna throw a curveball at you. I'm gonna leave my hand here. Do not push into my hand, start at the bottom. So think about squeezing your butt under you. Yeah, 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 there you go, man. And you feel the lower abs pushing that against me? That's what I want. So you're starting at the bottom into flexion. Working your way up, one by one, as best you can. Beautiful. Keep going, keep going. Now you can look down all the way. And now I'm gonna throw one more curveball at you. You feel your butt squeezing you to tuck your pelvis underneath? Mm -hmm. Keep this here, stick your head up, and now I want you to start at the top, okay? So keep this where it is. Do not pull away from me. Can you extend from here now? So think chest up. Yeah, 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 there you go. Keep going, chest up, chest to the roof. You see how we're extending from this region now? Chest up more. Beautiful, yeah, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Butt up, butt up, butt up, chest up a little bit more. Big deep breath, try to relax there. Find more extension everywhere. So chest up, butt up. And now go ahead and pivot your head down. Bring this guy up for me, all the way up. Yep, beautiful, back up into me more. 
Good. 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 Awesome. Does that make sense? Do you see how we make a normal cat cow a lot more deliberate, a lot more intentional? And so the idea is that if there's 24 different joints in your back and all of those joints are supposed to move the way your hand moves, but it doesn't come that naturally because if you don't use it, you lose it. That is probably the best warm up tool you can be doing for your spine. Do you have questions on that? And we're gonna do another concept called cars. Are you familiar with cars? Yeah. The concept of cars, controlled articular rotations, they kind of get sloppy with people. Most sports trainers I've seen, when they do cars, they kind of butcher them. They're they're not like that well executed. Just like how you can have good squat form and amazing squat form. People have like okay car form, but not amazing. So we're gonna do a spine car. For the spine car, let's have you stand up. I'm gonna show you first, and then I'm gonna have you model. The point of the spine car is to separate your hip from your spine. So I want you to see how I'm gonna be rounding my back all the way. And then I want you to watch how when I start rotating, I'm not letting my hips move. My hips stay still. I'm going into extension. Notice I'm not like doing this. Chest up. I'm twisting. I'm laterally flexing all the way around. The idea is that when we do cars, we're developing spatial awareness and the ability to move this separately from this. If you have compensation between the two, then your quality of movement's gonna suffer as a result of that. So let's have you stand with your feet apart. Let's have you hug yourself. I'm gonna give you a couple cues. For most people, starting in extension is easier. So let's have you start sticking your chest up and find extension of your spine. So a little bit more, chest up a little bit further. We have extension all the way through here. Now without moving your hip at all, slowly rotate to your right and I want you to feel the end of your spine's rotation where your hip wants to start moving that's right about there right so that's where your spine ends fine now think about pouring water out of your right ear and go laterally flex exactly and I want you to go until you feel where your hip wants to start moving you feel this side pulling open Keep laterally flexing. You ran out of space like right about there, right? So you're out of range there, fine. Now put your head down and start rounding your spine forward and kind of fold yourself up like this. Watch your hips, yep, keep folding up, keep folding up. And now bring it around to me slowly. Beautiful, keep rounding, keep rounding, keep rounding. Now pause. Can you keep your head still, but push this up into me more? Yeah, you see how you're rounding your spine even more there. Those millimeters of range of motion matter a lot. Okay, I'm trying to emphasize that big time. Keep this still, start rotating to the left. Keep going, keep going. You feel that end point like right about there. Mm -hmm. Now think about pouring water out of your ear again, and that's gonna transition you back to the starting point, right? You see how your hips wanna shift? Don't let that hip shift. Water out of your ear and start driving your chest up. Beautiful, extension, extension, chest up a little bit more. Beautiful, take a big deep breath there. Now rotate back towards the PT desk. So you're gonna rotate to your left, twist. Feel the end of rotation, okay? We call this having physical literacy. How literate are you of your spine? And can you move that separate from this, right? Water out of your left ear. You ran out of space, like right about there. You feel this pulling, okay? Head down, start rounding your spine forward. Very intentionally, tighten the stomach and think about folding yourself up. A little bit more rounding, keep going, more. More, you got more there? Yeah, man, keep going, keep going. Yeah, now bring it around to me, and the hips aren't moving, exactly. Now pause, can you push this up any higher? You see how you had more there? So your job is to get better at the car by learning to squeeze every inch out of it. Rotate to your right now, watch the hips. Yep, keep going, beautiful. You feel this side starting to pull? Now pour water out of your right ear and don't let the hips move, right? The spine is laterally flexing and we feel this left side pulling. Full. Keep going with it, awesome. All the way up, chest up, extend, extend, chest up more, chest up more, and relax. Have you done that before? Never? You see how intentional we have to be and not letting the hips shift with you? And so the idea is that those two are our warm up for any spine training we're doing so that when we do our other spine training, you have the awareness there to get more out of it basically. Okay. That was our warm up. When athletes train, typically speaking, they train with a neutral spine, mm -hmm. right? They're like doing a deadlift, their back is totally straight. They're squatting, their back is totally straight. And people seem to think that that's the best way to train an athlete. It's a way to train an athlete. But when in your sport, or do you actually have a straight back? It's like almost never, yeah. right? You're always moving in a very dynamic fashion. So the point is of the training is to train the tissue in your spine in a dynamic fashion so it carries over on the court better. So what we're gonna do is a Jefferson curl and what that's gonna look like, there's two ways we can go about it. We're gonna start with just the basic version with your stomach relaxed. Do you see how intentional I am at rounding at the spine? And I'm not doing like a deadlift, like an RDL. So we're gonna go all the way down until you feel a stretch in the base of your spine and then we're gonna come back up. 
another way we can do this is you can twist, but you notice my hips aren't shifting with me. So we're separating your spine from your hip like we did earlier. And then you would come back up and then rotate down the other way. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're gonna start with you doing it linear, just forward and back to kind of get a feel for things. I wanna make sure there's no pain. If you get pain, then that's something we're gonna have to pull apart first. Okay. I imagine you won't, but if you do, just say so. A way to think about it is when you do a deadlift, usually you use your hips first. The hips stay still and you're intentionally curving through here and you're gonna feel a stretching sensation like your discs are pulling apart. Just like, like people, a lot of people look at that exercise and say, oh, it's dangerous, you're gonna hurt your back. Any exercise is dangerous if you go too heavy and use too much momentum. I don't want you coming to the bottom and then jacking it back up because that's how you're gonna hurt yourself. So I want you just to ease into it, start with the head and then let the upper back follow and then eventually we'll get to your lower back. So the stomach's relaxed. I don't want it tensed. If you tense your stomach, you're gonna have a harder time feeling a stretch. So the head goes down first. Yep, and think about dragging the bar down and we're getting some curvature through the thoracic spine. And then as you come down, we're gonna start getting curvature in the lower back. If you want a soft bend to your knees, I'm okay with a soft bend, like a little bit, if that's more comfortable. Okay. Doesn't really matter to me at all. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Do we feel this stuff pulling a little bit? Okay, keep going into that. And I want you to go down until you feel the maximum stretch you can find in your spine. So you have to kind of internally coordinate that. So almost down to the base of your tailbone, right? And then once you find that full stretch, take a big deep breath there and then come back up slowly. Any pain there? No pain, good. Take your time with it. And then go into extension, chest up, chest up, chest up, all the way up. Kind of makes sense there? Mm -hmm. How about we do five reps like that, okay. and then we can add the rotation and you can see how they differ. Okay. So the head goes down again, you're tucking the chin, you're rounding the cervical spine, then we're gonna round the thoracic spine, and you're gonna work your way down towards the tailbone, the lumbar and stomach is relaxed, and we're getting a stretch on the backside of your spine still, yeah? Yeah. Beautiful. How heavy is it? A little heavy. A little heavy? Yeah. You're not used to this, are you? That's fine. And you don't need a lot of weight either. You know, if it's new for you too, anything will make you improve and then bring it back up. Exactly. And you're not really feeling any glute or hamstring, mostly your spine. Yeah. Awesome. Good job. Chest up, chest up, chest up. Awesome. And then again, tuck the chin, round the upper back. So think about curving this. Yes, exactly. Keep curving this, keep curving this as you lean over, pull that apart. Watch the hips, round this up a little bit more. Yeah, you feel that difference right there? It wasn't a whole lot of movement. I bet the camera couldn't even see that, but I bet you feel the difference there. Push that up into me as well. You feel that stretch going all the way through and then come back up, take your time. And just like any other exercise, over time, you would add a little bit of weight to it, you know, or more reps. Like you don't start off squatting 300 pounds. You start with the bar and then work your way up. It's the exact same concept here. So now you're gonna do the same thing, but instead of just going forward and back, I wanna see you twisting, but not letting your hips move with you. And let's say you twist towards me, you're gonna feel this right side pulling. Okay. When you twist this way, you're gonna feel the left corner pulling, okay? So there's a little bit more specificity to what portion of your spine we're training. So the exact same concept, but I want you to think about the middle of the bar coming towards like the outer portion of your shoe here. So same deal, hips stay still, slowly twist. Yep, exactly, and start rounding. Push this up into me as well, go a little bit further. You feel this right corner pulling? Any pain there at all? None. Do you feel any pinching on this left side? None, good. You feel that stretch again? It's similar but different than what we just did, right? And then bring it back up. Beautiful, extend the spine, extend the spine, all the way up, and then back to the starting position. Chest up, and then again, back into it. Your job is, again, to separate this. Drive that up into me, more. Push up into me, push up into me. Yeah, go a little bit further. Earlier we mentioned how you were tighter to the left on that spine car. We might find the same thing as here when you come the other way. Just take a mental note of that. And we can use this tool to help open up that left side when we get there. Okay. All right, chest up. And then back this way now. So same concept, but remember your left side's tighter. Mm -hmm. If you go to the right and you get a bigger stretch here than you did here, then we can do a couple extra reps there if you want to give it the attention it needs, right? So same deal, you're gonna rotate to the right, but watch the left hip from pulling. And you might feel this left hip wanting to pull more because you're tighter, and that's fine, just be aware of it. Push up into me, we feel this side pulling open. Would you say it's a deeper stretch than the other side? Yeah. It is, okay, spend some time there, like a one-two pause, big deep breath, and you can bring it back up. No pain on this side? Awesome, chest up, extension. A little bit more here, yep, and then back into it. Let's do four more there, and then we'll give your back uh, some other stuff to work on. Good, good job on the hip, very good job on the hip. Got all the pulling here, no closing side restriction here at all? Nothing, good. You don't feel anything on your right side? Not really? Maybe a, a little bit? More, way more on the left though, good. Let's get three more there and then uh, we can keep it moving and train some other positions for this. And you can do this with dumbbells, kettlebells too, right, if you're at school or wherever else. You don't need a barbell, one more. Nice, round it, push up into me, push this up into me, good. Keep that hip squared, big deep breath in that stretch, let it open up, right, and then bring it back up. 
and you see how it's like kind of like a deadlift, but it's a spine deadlift. It's not a hip deadlift. And again, like the deadlift is like a fine exercise, but people will see power lifters doing deadlifts and then they think, oh, I'm a basketball player, I need power. Like, yes, but you need your joints to work better to have power, you know? And like the deadlift is fine, but all of your volume, like your whole workout shouldn't be based around a deadlift. Uh -huh. Questions on that? Nope. Um, we're gonna go do sit-ups now. Okay. The sit-up is gonna be focusing on this portion of your spine rounding as opposed to this, right? We spent a lot of time stretching. Now we're gonna squeeze your core a ton. So let's come over this way. So um, when people do sit-ups, sit-ups are butchered big time. I want you to see how intentional I am. Watch my low back as I push down. You see how I'm driving it down one by one. And then when I come back up, watch how I'm peeling my back up. You see how much I'm shaking as I come up? Like that, okay? So the same curvature of your spine that we created over on the Jefferson curl, we're trying to put here where each of your vertebrae are coming down on the bench one by one. I'm gonna put my hand under your lower back and if you're not pushing down, I'm gonna cue you to push down. So let's see what you got there. So let's start in the top position, get your feet up on here. So the goal now is to feel the front side of your spine. Like uh, a lot of people train their core, but their core is their spine and their spine is their core. So we just stretch the back side of your spine. Now we're gonna squeeze the front side. So with without holding onto your legs or anything, think about driving this down against me, okay? So I want you to feel your lower abs, kind of like where your belly button is, pushing down against me here. Good, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Push down more against me. That, right there, more. More, 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 more. You see what we're doing there? Take your time, take your time. Push against me more. Lower abs, lower abs, lower abs. And then all the way back. You can relax for a sec. Now push down against me. Tuck your chin. Push down lower on your lower back more. Yeah, and then you see I'm peeling you up. Start rounding. You see how much we're shaking there? Push your lower back down against me more. Yes, that. Beautiful. You see how hard that is? Yeah, so people butcher sit-ups a lot. And as they sit up, they're extending their spine. A sit up, you should never be extending your spine. You should be rounding it the whole time, okay? So if you have a hard time with that, that exercise should help complement this. They kind of go hand in hand, right? Let's try that again. Push against me, find the lower abs. Yes, so you feel that portion of your spine my hands on? Yeah. Break my hand, push down harder. That, right there, you feel your back pop there too? Mm -hmm. Push down harder, more, more. This is the first thing to touch the bench, come on. Good, yes, exactly. And then here, yep, and then all the way back. And then tuck the chin, sit back up, peel up. Like I have a spatula, right? Push down harder here, push down harder here. Yeah, man. You see how you lose it on the way up a little bit? It's all good, keep going. So that's like, you see how as you came up, it was hard to keep that low back glued to the bottom. So that's where if we had a little bit more range of motion and a little bit more awareness from the other exercise, then you should be able to carry that over to here. Do you have any questions on that? No. No? All right, you did spine cars, right? The controlled articular rotations. That is like the basic version of it. Big part of cars I think athletes should do more of is challenge the cars in different environments, okay? That spatial awareness of where like you're all the way over here or you're all the way up here, that kind of thing. You're gonna have a cable there with the ball here. You're gonna do the spine car, but you're gonna be holding the cable in your hands. The cable's gonna be pulling you and you have to fight against it. Okay, so it's the same thing we did when we warmed up, except now you have some resistance going from one direction. So go ahead and hold this guy, face me, and I want you to put this within your hands and squeeze that ball. Spread your feet a little bit for me. Come out a little bit further. So right now, th think spine extension. So the way we started, chest up, chest up, chest up. You feel extension, and you feel the cable wanting to twist you to the right. What I want you to do is twist to the left very slowly. Yep, keep going. And now think about water out of your ear. Water out of your ear, keep going. And now head down and round it. You should feel this side of your stomach engaging harder to fight the cable. And now head down, round the spine. Keep rounding forward, tighten the core, more rounding. You got more rounding there. Create as much curvature as you can through here. Bring it around this way. You see how it's a little bit more complexity to it than what we did when we started, right? Now water out of your right ear. Yep, water out of your right ear, keep going. More, 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 and then chest up, go into extension. Chest up, chest up, keep going up. How heavy is it? Uh, Manageable? Yeah. Yeah, okay, keep the chest up. Now rotate back to your right. So twist, nice controlled, watch those hips. So you can see we're biasing the rotation of your spine as opposed to just moving it without any load in your hands. Bring it all the way back down, head down, round it. Keep rounding, keep rounding, keep rounding. Yeah, man, keep going. Push this up into me as you lean over. Keep the ball tight to you, squeeze the ball, squeeze the ball. Yeah, the ball is part of you, right? Okay. Keep it as one unit. Rotate, twist to the left. You should feel this side of your stomach tightening, right? To fight the, t the cable, right? We're fighting the cable. Water out of your left ear. The hips aren't moving. Full extension of the spine. Squeeze the hell out of the ball. Keep it tight. Chest up, chest up, chest up. You got another one in you? Mm -hmm. Twist to the left. 
Reverse. Yep, watch those hips. Found the end there, you feel this tightening. Mm -hmm. Water out of your ear, and then head down, round the spine. Tighten the stomach, tighten the stomach. Squeeze the ball harder. More curvature through here. Go to your right now. Water out of your ear. Extension. Extension, 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 all the way through. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways we can progress that. Like you have an eight pound ball with seven and a half pounds on here. I have seen people online doing like a three minute set, but it was one rep where they were going so slow that they just did one rep, but the time under tension was like through the roof, right? So like, it's I, I want you to control it. Like it's a controlled articular rotation, but like, I don't care if you go heavier. I don't really care if you go longer. I just wanna make sure that the positioning is where it's at, right? The hips are glued, the spine's doing all the work. And then from there, it's kind of up to you about how you do it. It feels a lot like better than did over there, yeah, and you, you own it more. You own it way more, man. You know, it's like one of those things that, like, in every sport, you're always in these weird positions randomly for you know a brief yeah. moment. But if you don't have the awareness in this context, like, if you can't even do it here, how could you move your spine in a dynamic way when you're on the court? You know, what I mean, there's so many other things going on that, like, I'm not even asking you to do that much, and most people can't do that at all. And you can see as you just get practice with it, you're becoming better at using your spine, and that's how you become a better athlete: is bringing a better spine to the court, a better hip, a better ankle, not bringing a stronger squat. Yeah. You know, your deadlift, whether it's 300 or 400 pounds, makes no difference to me. Yeah. What matters to me is can you move your spine, and then can you move it with load, and then can you keep everything else still while doing both things? And I think that's the lens that people that do the style of training that we do would uh, say to do it in, but the old style of training, the old school way is you need to squat X amount of weight. Like they, at the NBA Combine, they do like the bench press test, yeah, yeah, yeah. but like they never test how well do their shoulders work. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if your shoulder sucks and you can't rotate before you shoot, yeah. I don't care if you can bench press 400 pounds because your shoulder doesn't work, right? So I think the focus in athletes is a little bit misguided. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean it's, there's no use case, okay. but it's just like, where, where can we do more, right? And I think this is like kind of part of the answer, right? Um, so we worked your spine this way. We worked your spine this way. We're gonna work your spine this way okay. over in the back again, okay? And then we're gonna train extension. We'll finish it off with that. So lateral flexion of your spine. We're gonna have you in this type of setup. I'm gonna have one hand behind your head to pull this apart more and we're gonna get a sense of how well can you lengthen this side relax the stomach tighten come back up so you notice everything we've done is similar to the car right the spine car but we're kind of pulling it apart into different pieces let's see what you got um, your left sides the tighter side let's start on the left so face it that way yeah because I think that left side's gonna need to open up quite a bit so your left foot's gonna go up on here so let's hug yourself for a minute yeah right there chest up extend the spine I want to see you bring your shoulder down to the floor and bend over this and we're trying to pull this portion apart do we feel a stretch in the lateral portion of your yeah. spine? A lot, a little? Uh, a lot, yeah, a lot. More there, right? Yeah. yeah, and then bring that to me a little bit more. You feel that stretch? Same thing as before, a big deep breath there. Tighten your obliques now, and now bring this together. So come back up, almost like an oblique crunch. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Contract, make sense? Mm -hmm. Now relax the stomach, go back into the stretch. Mm -hmm. Extend the spine more, chest up. You feel that stretch better when you do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any pinching or pain on the right side? None, good. Tighten up, bring it back up, bring it back up. Beautiful, open that up again. Is it hard enough where you don't want any added weight? Oh yeah. That's fine. You could technically hold a plate or a dumbbell in that hand and do the same thing, okay? And over time you progress it. Tighten up, and if this is hard enough as it is, fine. I mean, you'll make gains doing it anyway. Like, it'll benefit you just now, you know? Watch these hips, go again. Chest up, extend. Yeah, man, good job. You can see again, we're trying to separate your spine from your hip, and the pad here is keeping your hip glued. So it's kind of allowing us to pull that apart the way we need to. Good job. Feel your obliques working a lot there too. Yeah. yeah? And you noticed how uh, that is the same portion of when you're yeah. here, yeah. right? And everything we've done is to make that spine car a little bit bigger, more productive, a little bit more precise. Yeah. yeah? So we did Jefferson curls for flexion. We did the spine car for rotation. We did that for lateral flexion. The last one we have to work on is extension. The GHG, you could do this over there too, but this is gonna be harder and probably more appropriate for you. And what it's gonna look like is you're gonna be up in this position, but I wanna make sure there's two different things. You can come up and squeeze your butt, or you can come up and use your spine. I am trying to get you to use your spine and not your hips. Let's get you up, see what you got. So again, there's two ways to do this, right? We talked about how the deadlift uses your glutes and your hips, uh -huh. but we did your spine today. Yeah. I'm trying to get you to use your spine and not glutes and hips. Okay. So let's have you lean forward all the way. And I want you to lean back and extend from the spinal cord and not extend from the hip, okay? So the glutes are relaxed. Think about leaning backwards like this, a little bit further, a little bit further. Do you feel your low back extending there? Yeah. You feel your upper back extending there? Yeah. Try to get up a little bit higher. Hold it, a little bit more, a little bit more, right there, hold. 
How much spine are you getting relative to hip? Uh, is it 50, 50, 75, 25, 100, zero? Uh, I would say like 70, 30. Yeah, okay, stay there. Keep extending the spine. Your job is to hold that extension until it fails, until you start falling forward. We can make this harder if we chose to, which would be maintaining extension and now twisting, but chest up as you do that, right? So you're twisting towards me now, twist towards me, chest up though, chest up though. You feel this corner contracting. Yeah. Now rotate the other way and twist this way. Exactly, keep going, keep going. Chest up more, chest up more. Keep using the spine. I don't want you using the hips. Good, and then back around. Chest up, chest up, chest up. You still feel the spine doing most of the work? Good, keep going, man. Come on, hold it, hold it. Then rotate back the other way. Keep pulling away from my hand, you're playing limbo. Good, no pain in the low back, right? Just extenders working, right? Good, a little bit more, lean back away. Chest up, man, come on, you got more, you got more. That, right there, then rotate. Beautiful. Back again, you're on a timer right now. You've been going for a minute 15. Let's see a two minute set, 45 seconds, man. Come on, one round until you fail, until it collapses. Pull away from me, keep pulling away from me. Beautiful, we had this squeezing, come back at this squeezing. Chest up more, chest up more, that, right there, come on. Rotate back to the left, you got at least 30 seconds. Starting to get hard, all right, don't twist anymore. Come back up, hold that right there. Chest up, chest up, pull away from me, you got 10, nine, up more, man, come on. Eight, seven, six, Five, use your glutes if you need to. Tw squeeze everything, four, up higher. Three, two, one. That got hard, didn't it? I guess I just do the lot in the... Low back, yeah, yeah, no pain though, just stuff working and squeezing, right? And that's another thing too, is a lot of people are so scared to work their lower back that they never work their low back. If there's no pain there, train it. There's muscle and connective tissue there that's really important for how your spine functions. And this is just one part of four parts that we did, you know? And like, if at the end of the day, all of, all the poor, everything your spine can do should be trained, but most people do like core stuff where you're tightening your core, like a plank, a pal-off press, you know what I mean? Weighted carries, but they're never doing anything for their, their core that makes them move, you know? So each of the things that we did kind of were pieces of the car. Okay. What I wanna go do now is finish with just a spine car okay. and top it all off, okay. all right? I like finishing with cars too. We're gonna do one really good rep, slow as hell, if it's a minute or two, fine. With the idea being that we're like saving the work is what I call it, think about it, like we, you type up a document and you hit save at the end of that, yeah. right? We trained your body for what we wanted from the spine uh -huh. and now we're saving it so that like your nervous system knows how to keep it and use it. Okay. So let's get you here in this position. The same sequence. I wanna go slow as hell, methodical, uh -huh. nail it. You have all that awareness kind of lit up in your back uh -huh. and uh, we're gonna put it to use. All right, so feet apart, hug yourself, find full extension all the way through. Chest up, chest up, chest up. You got more extension there, more extension there. You find full extension, uh -huh. now rotate, whichever way you want. This hip stays glued, more rotation, twisting. Yep, water out of your left ear, head down, round it. Find as much curvature as you can. Give me a little bit more. Yeah, man, good job, that was a killer rep. Keep going, take your time with it. Nice, nice, water out of your ear. Good, you should feel all sorts of stuff still working from what we just did. You should have a little bit more awareness from here now too, right, from what we just did. Now rotate back, keep extension, chest up, twist, water out of that ear, beautiful. Pull this apart. The hip hasn't moved at all, good job. Head down, flex the spine, round it, much better. You see how much more awareness you have of that already? And it's been an hour. Watch that hip, yep, water out of your ear, chest up, extension all the way through. So again, a couple, a couple take home points for the viewers too. Training for skill and the ability to perform skill. People think squatting makes them a better basketball player, deadlifting a better basketball player, bench press. No, the ability to move your body will make you a better player, right? And so that's where everything we did was, yes, it was strength training, but it's like body awareness training, body practice, right? And so that way you can carry over and actually perform better, right? Everyone thinks if I bring a stronger squat to the court, I'm gonna be better. No, you need to bring a better hip, a better spine, a better shoulder. And we change the lens in that we're looking that through. And then next thing you know it, your lifts get better, but also your skill gets better and then you're healthier too. Like that's how you prevent injury injury too, you know, having your joints function better so that you can not only be a better skilled athlete, you can play longer, right? It's more sustainable. And then your lifts will be stronger as a result of that too when you do do your strength training. That was awesome, man. Of course, of course.